What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set the height and the width of your widgets with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at height and width of widgets and a couple other things. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we set this button to span the entire two columns here. And I showed you how to do that with sort of introducing other grid layouts inside of our grid layouts. So if you haven't seen that video, check the comment section below for a link to the playlist. In this video, we're going to build on this and I'm going to show you how to explicitly set the height and width of all of these things, all of these widgets, all of these columns, all of these rows. And up until now, we've just been letting Kivi sort of guess and sort of do the default thing, but you could be very explicit about it. So I've got a file called height underscore width dot pi. It's the same exact code that we did in the last video. And we're going to build on it from there. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's start with the button because it's sort of separate and it's sort of easy to take a look at. We can explicitly set the height and the width of basically any widget. So I'm going to come through here and let me put all these things on separate lines so we can kind of read them easier. I'm just going to come down here to where we created our button. We've got a self.submit button. We want the text to say submit. We want the font size to be 32. So we change the height and width of things by sort of doing two things. We have to set the size hint of the X or Y coordinate, and we also have to change the actual height or width itself. So what is this size hint thing? We just go size underscore hint underscore Y equals none. So size hint Y is Y axis versus the X axis, or is that opposite? So I sent Y goes with height basically. So now we can set the height. So let's go height, H-E-I-G-H-T equals, I don't know, let's say 50, right? So let's save this and run it and see what this did. So what we're saying is instead of setting the button height to really big, make it only 50. So let's head back over to our Git Bash terminal. Let's run this again, Python height underscore width dot pi. And now we see the button is only 50 pixels high, right? So very cool. Now we have to very explicitly put this size hint thing on here. Otherwise, if we save this, if we take this off and just save it and run it, nothing changes. The button just defaults to be the size of the container that it's in basically, right? So very specifically, you need to put the size hint for the Y coordinate set to none. So that's height. We could do the same thing for width, right? So we can hit size underscore hint underscore X to equal none. And then we can set the width to whatever we want. So let's say, I don't know, 100 or 200. So we save this and run it. Now we have this 50 by 200 pixel button. It doesn't span the whole thing or anything, but you know, if you wanted to do that, that's how you would do it. So this basically works with any widget. We can do the same thing to our, say, text input boxes up here. We have self.name text input. This is our, it's asking for the name. We have multi-line true. We can just here, I'm just gonna paste these in from the other one. And let's change this to 400, at least make it a little bigger. Save this and run it. And now we have this 50 by whatever we put, 400 was it? And you'll notice there's a big gap here, but that's because our label is still the same size it used to be. So if you want this to sort of all even out, we need to also change the label. So we can do that real quick, just to see how to do it. Now we come up here and inside of here, we've got our label defined. And then inside of here is the properties for the label. So inside this parentheses, we have to put a comma there and we can paste the same stuff like that. Right, setting the size hint to none, size hint X none, and then just set your height and width to whatever you want. So if we save this and run it, it should look a little nicer, at least slightly a little bit nicer, right? And so that's how that works. So, you know, a lot of times you're just gonna want Kivi to kind of guess, and other times you wanna be very explicit. This is one way to do it. Now I should mention, this is sort of a rudimentary way to do things with Kivi. Kivi has a whole design language that we're going to look at probably in the next couple of videos that kind of makes this stuff irrelevant. 
with the Kiwi design language, and we'll talk about this more later, you abstract away all of your stuff like this, all of the design things into another file, sort of like a CSS file with HTML and CSS, where all the design stuff is stuck in the CSS file and you just reference it. Same thing, sort of, and we'll look at that. And you're likely gonna use that method most of the time, and you're not gonna explicitly put things in your Python code. Like I said, you'll abstract that away to the Kiwi design file, but if you don't do that and you just want to, you know, create a quick little app or something, this is how you would do it. Now, this is one way to do it. There's also, we can also sort of set defaults for the entire grid layout. So let's look at that real quick. So we can look at something called row force default and call force default. So row force and column force obviously stand for forcing the row and forcing the columns to default to a certain thing. And I'll show you how to do it for both of these sort of grid systems, but let's start out with the second grid system, the one that has the labels and the input box, that second one we created in the last video, this grid layout. So when we created our grid layout here, we set the number of columns to two, but we didn't set the height or the width of those columns. And we could do that right here by default. We can also do that in here as we've done individually, but you may want to do something for all of them. And you may not want to put all of this code in every single one of your widgets, you can define the default for all of them here. To do that, we just come to our grid layout here where we defined it, and we just go row underscore force underscore default and set that equal to true. And let's put these all on separate lines so it's easier to read. Okay, so that's the row. Now we can set the actual height. We can go row underscore default underscore height and let's set that equal to, I don't know, 40 or so, right? So we can do the same thing with our columns. We can go call underscore force underscore default, set that equal to true. And then we can go call underscore default underscore width, and let's set that equal to say 100. Okay, so for good measure, let's come down here and take this out of stuff we just did earlier for this widget and the text input box itself. Just to clean this up. Okay, so think this through, what is this gonna do? It's gonna make all of our sort of top grid layout things 40 by 100, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what this looks like. And you see now we've got they're 40 in height and about 100. Is that what we did, 100? Yeah, column with 100 in width. And that's how you do that. Now you'll notice that all of this is scrunched up here because our main grid layout is still defaulting to whatever it's defaulting to, right? And it's a little trickier to change all of these things for our main grid layout because we never really defined the grid layout. We've got here this self top grid and we set it to grid layout. We didn't do that for our just main grid layout. We just kind of took the default stuff, right? We've got self dot calls here. So how do we, how do we do these type of things for just the default grid layout? Well, we just grab each one and we go self dot row force default equals true. And then we could do the same thing here. Let's say self dot row default height. And we can do the same thing for each of these. Let me just paste this in. Self dot, self dot. Okay, so we could just do it that way. If we save this and ran it, this is really gonna scrunch everything up. So let's change this uh, default height to 40, 80, let's say 120 or so and you'll see why in a second here. So, okay, let's run this again. So now the button is up closer to the rest of the things and we sort of define those heights and widths. So a little weird, and like I said, a lot of this stuff is gonna become irrelevant when we start looking at the Kiwi design language in the next couple of videos. But if you wanna explicitly, explicitly do these things, and you can put a space here or not, doesn't matter, um, this is how you do them. So the big thing here to learn is setting the height and widths of individual widgets if you need to do that individually. And to do that, again, we just set the height 
size hint Y to none, size hint X to none, and then set your height and width. And just got to remember, if you want to change the height and the width, you need to put the size hint X and the size hint Y on there. Uh, you know, I don't know really why we need to do that, but why well, we can't just say, hey, make the height 50. We also have to do this. But that's just how Kibby does it. So that's how we do it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. Save pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.